few squat, but not as bad as my 1500. My 1500 with 1500 pounds was like buried. What is going on today, guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are doing some more payload testing, but not with my Ram Power Wagon here. Today, we are gonna use a 2021 Ram 1500 Rebel. My good buddy Wes is gonna bring down his red uh, Ram Rebel, and we are going to load it up, test the payload on it. Should be fun. Now, if you guys remember, we used barrels on this truck, and we're gonna do the exact same. It's very easy to measure the payload. I believe the Ram Rebel payload on that specific truck is about 1,350 pounds, so about 100 pounds less than this power wagon. Like I said, we're gonna load it up with those barrels, basically until the axle is maxed out. Um, and I have a sneaky suspicion that it's gonna take a lot less weight than what it did with this. These are what we used last time. These are 55 gallon barrels, um, basically meaning that each barrel weighs about 460 odd pounds. I'll double check the numbers on that, but um, we are gonna load probably three barrels in here to max out the payload. We'll see how the rear suspension handles in comparison to the power wagon. And I think it'll be a really cool comparison. So we got the Ram Rebel in the bay here. Um, first of all, let's actually check the official um, payload number. Um, as you guys probably have heard me say in my last couple of videos, if you're not sure what your payload number is, it will always be on the driver's side door sticker. Um, so always check that out. 1,345 pounds of payload. So the reason why I want to compare this Ram Rebel to my power wing is because um, a lot of people already compare the two trucks and I get a lot of people saying, you know, why is the Power Wagon's um, payload numbers and towing numbers so low in comparison to the Ram Rebel, which is an off-road truck. It's just a 1500 where the Power Wagon is a 2500. And so I think today will be a good, um, you know, comparison showing potentially that the Power Wagon numbers are a little bit low in comparison to what is actually on paper. Um, if you guys remember, we loaded up the Power Wagon with like, I think it was 2,400 pounds and the rear axle still had room. It was not bottomed out on the bump stops. We are not bottomed out. In fact, that is a conservative inch there. So we'll see what this truck can do before the axle is bottomed out on the bump stops. We're gonna unload probably three of these barrels. That should be about 1,400 pounds, slightly over the payload, but um, pretty darn close. So we are at about 40 inches to the bottom of the fender. We will remember that. We'll see how bad this thing will squat. Probably four inches. That's what my old 1500 did, but this is a Rebel. Only time will tell. Now I will get underneath the truck and I will show you guys the suspension setup uh, before we load her on up. Just like the Power Wagon, this truck uses coils as suspension. Uh, this is your bump stop here. We probably have about, I don't know, three and a half, four inches there. That is what our suspension looks like before we load her up. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it is loaded. roughly about 950 pounds you know just under a thousand pounds of weight in this truck as you guys can see we're starting to sag a little bit so with a thousand pounds of weight we are now at let's call it 37 and a quarter down from 40 so almost three inches of squat about two inches and three quarters worth of squat with a thousand pounds not too bad not too bad at all. We are under the truck here. Now, very interesting. We see the coils are starting to compress a little more. Look at that bump stop. So there's our bump stop there, guys. And we have about a half inch till she is on the bottom of the axle, or the top of the axle, pardon me. 
Very interesting. So that third barrel is about halfway full. We're gonna jump underneath here real quick. Oh, getting closer. Still not touching though. That's a good sign. So we have just about 1,400 pounds of payload in this Ram Rebel. As you guys heard me say earlier, the payload is only 1,345 pounds. So we're a little bit over, but regardless, we're basically maxed out here. We were originally at 40 um, and we have dropped to about 36 and a half. So not too bad, but three and a half inches. Um, if you guys remember the power wagon, when it was fully loaded up, dropped about five inches. So not too bad for the Rebel there. As I was kind of predicting, our coil is looking very compressed and we are in fact on the axle bump stop there if you guys can see that um so we are very pretty much maxed out on this axle and i would be pretty cautious when trying to add more weight than this because there is really no suspension travel left and you're just riding on the bump stops which really isn't the best thing for any pickup truck now, for those of you guys who are interested, the rear axle has a max um, loading of 4,100 pounds. So you're more than likely gonna max out the GVW and the payload before you even come close to maxing out the axle. But it does have a 4,100 pound rating. The front is 3,900 pounds, so not too bad. Oh yeah, nice and solid. She is squatting, but not as bad as my 1500. My 1500 with 1500 pounds was like buried. Well, there you go, guys. That's pretty much how it went as I expect it would, um, judging just with my old 1500. So we had about 1400 pounds on that Ram Rebel. And obviously when we were driving around, um, you know, there's the weight of the driver there too. So we were a little bit over, um, you know, the max payload, but you know, what I was actually kind of surprised about when we had about just under a thousand pounds, about 900 and so pounds in the back of the Rebel, the bump stops were like half an inch from touching the axle. Now, if you guys remember with the power wagon, we had the full max payload in this truck and we still had about three inches of room before the, uh, the bump stop hit the axle. So um, it wasn't until we had about, you know, a thousand pounds more. So about 24, 2300 pounds, did we see the bump stop become that close to the axle. So, you know, in reality, I think the payload on this truck is 1,483 pounds. So it's about 150 pounds more than the Rebel. But in reality, this truck can probably have more than a thousand pounds in the back of the truck comfortably than the Rebel. And you know, that's just what you would expect with a 2,500 versus a 1,500. So uh, I guess moral of the story is, you know, I think the Ram Rebel and the power wagon the numbers in terms of payload and towing capacity are very similar but there is a big difference in the real world so that's what i wanted to show you guys today so here's some comparison clips of the power wagon and the rebel and as you guys can see with the power wagon um, with about 1800 pounds of payload in it it basically just looks leveled out in comparison to the ram rebel uh, with about 1550 pounds of payload in it uh, it looks a little bit more um, weighed down Now, I love the Ram Rebel. I think it is just a different purposely built truck. Um, you know, it's easier to drive, it's quicker, it's faster, it's smaller, more fuel efficient. So, um, you know, it's not like the Ram Rebel isn't a good truck. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I really enjoy it actually. But like I mentioned earlier, there always seems to be a comparison between the Power Wagon and the Ram Rebel and a question as to why would you buy the Power Wagon if the payload and towing numbers are very similar and so hopefully 
that little demonstration today showed you why the power wagon is in fact just a stronger built truck now my good buddy wes what he's going to do most likely is put uh put some airbags in the back of that rebel and he says that'll then give him up to i think 22 or 2300 pounds of payload um, and really help when he's towing his trailer he's got a big airstream trailer he tows with that truck um, so that'll really help with that and if you guys have any questions about those trucks um, you know feel free to drop a comment down below as always if you like the video don't forget to leave that thumbs up and if you like cool stuff like this don't forget to subscribe we're gonna have quite a few uh, truck comparisons with payloads first of all and I'm working on getting a fully loaded trailer available to me so we can also do max towing tests for a bunch of Ram trucks first and foremost and whatever the trucks I feel like reviewing. So the future should be exciting. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.